Throughout Middle-earth, there are creatures that are not quite alive, but not quite dead either. They are undead. There are the Barrowites, the Oathbreakers or the Army of the Dead, and the Nazgul, the Ringwraiths. In this video, we will be covering what it means to be each one of these, what sets them apart, and digging a little deeper into Middle-earth's lore. There are three types of undead creatures in today's video that we will be covering. We'll be looking at what they are and where we've seen them, starting with the Barrow Rites that appear in the Fellowship of the Ring. This will be the most extensive one because you will probably already know most of what there is to know about the other two. Now you may be wondering, I don't remember them appearing in the films. That's because they didn't. This was another thing that Peter Jackson cut from the films as the intention was to make it as concise as possible. Because sometimes when translating it onto the big screen, book material doesn't always work. It was also because they appear in Book 1, Chapter 8, The Barrow Downs, featuring Tom Bombadil, who I think was rightfully left out. And in case you haven't seen it yet, there's a video I did last year all about him right here in this card and in the pinned comment down below. So the Barrow Whites are reanimated piles of bones possessed by spirits. Spirits of what? Unknown. But what we do know is that they are evil and they reside in the Barrow Downs, hence the name Barrow Whites. In another video where I discussed Norse influences in Tolkien, the origin of Whites comes from William Morris, an artist and a writer of poetry of fiction, who Tolkien took a lot of inspiration from, like when Tolkien wrote the story of Calervo. This usage of this type of creature was then used in other literary works, like A Song of Ice and Fire, much like how other mythological creatures are used and reused. The Barrow Whites were sent to the Barrow Downs by the Witch King of Angmar because there was an attempt to rebuild the fallen kingdom of Cardolan, once a kingdom of the Dúnedain. But since the Whites had haunted it, it would scare anyone who attempted to do so away. The four main hobbits, Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin, had decided to stay with Tom Bombadil for some time before setting off and continuing their journey. But in the chapter I mentioned earlier, Chapter 8, The Barrow Downs, the four headed towards there and after having lunch, they began to feel tired and thus they fell asleep. When Frodo woke up and it's beginning to get darker out, thinking he still has his friends with him, he looks for a way out. But upon realizing, he hears cries and tries to search for them. But alas, he could not find any of them and was greeted by a tall dark figure like a shadow against the stars who gripped him with an icy touch that drew him unconscious. And once he had woken up again, this time in a barrow, he found himself next to Sam, Merry, and Pippin, all of whom were unconscious. They had jewelry and gold surrounding them, as well as a sword which Frodo had used to chop off a white's hand after they sang and they tried to approach him. After it shrieked and snarled, Frodo fell over Merry and recalled Tom's song, requesting his aid. And he did. He came and he sang the whites away with his powerful song. All of them now rescued and conscious, the treasure had hidden daggers which the four would later use as swords. And after they had made their final departure from Tom Bombadil, he told them to head to the Prancing Pony. The next group of undead spirits are the Oathbreakers, also known as the Dead Men of Dunharrow, the Men of the White Mountains amongst other titles, and the Army of the Dead in the movie. And of course, as you know, they appeared in The Return of the King when Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli went to find them so that their oaths to Isildur could finally be fulfilled by Aragorn, Isildur's heir, and they could finally be at peace, which he finally granted them once they agreed to help them push back some of Sauron's forces. All of this information about them is pretty much covered, but what exactly put them in this position in the first place? Short answer is, well, these were men who worshipped Sauron in the Dark Years, the years in which Sauron ruled over Middle-earth during the Second Age, so although they had promised and made an oath to serve Isildur, they had broken it when he called for aid, and thus a curse was put upon them. The last type of undead we'll be speaking about are the Nazgul the ones that you've probably heard the most about. But in case you need a brief refresher, the Nazgul, sometimes called Ringwraiths, the Black Riders, or just the Nine, are the mightiest servants of Sauron, their chief being the Witch King of Angmar. The Nine were mortal men once upon a time, but they were given rings of power which later on corrupted them, eventually turning them into race that wore black robes. They carried around Morgul blades, which were daggers impregnated with a poison that could make you fall ill and turn into a wraith. This is why Frodo couldn't stay in Middle-earth any longer. While King's Foil had temporarily cured him and slowed the whole process down, he needed to leave because that was the only way his wound could completely heal. As for their specific identities, 
that is also unknown, except for one. So if you play Shadow of War, as fun as that game is, it's almost entirely false. The one that we do know of is called Kamul, and he became the new chief after the Witch King was killed by Eowyn. And if you're wondering which one it was specifically, it was this one. The one that went looking for Baggins and chased the hobbits around. And obviously, horses were not a good enough source of transportation, because not only could they not seem to keep up, they lost their horses when they were trying to reach Frodo later on. So they started flying on these. These dragon-like creatures called Belbies, though they are described to be more like birds. Giant, featherless, smelly birds to be more precise. It was a winged creature. If bird, then greater than all birds, and it was naked, and neither quill nor feather did it bear, and its vast pinions were as webs of hide between horn fingers, and it stank. Thank you for watching. Now that it's starting to get colder, and winter will be upon us in the next few months, why not pick up a mug or a sweater to keep you warm? Links in the description. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe and light the beacons, and until our next meeting, I bid you farewell.